the number one fastest way to find big schools of redfish and trout using a tool that you can master online in 10 minutes or less. Hey, everybody, I'm Joe Simons, like diamonds. And I'm Luke Simons. Like diamonds, we're the Salt Strong Bros. Are you pumped about this? I know we are. This is something that has absolutely revolutionized the way that we find fish. We all want to go find fish fast. So if that is you, then you've come to the right place. On this webinar training, we're going to do three different case studies and actually pull out some pretty cool footage and some satellite maps. The first one is how to quickly find trout any weekend of the year, even if you don't have one of those fancy trolling motors. Number two is how to use wind direction, something that a lot of us take for granted or don't look at at all to predict exactly where the feeding fish will be hiding. We got some really cool drone evidence, which I think is one of the best ways to be able to see all of this in action. And then number three is how to use weekly trends to predict where the redfish will be. What do you think, Luke? Let's, uh, let's cover it. Yeah, there's gonna be some good drone footage and, uh, and this will help really regardless of what region that, that you're in. We, you know, we personally live in Florida. We have members in our, in our fishing club that are really throughout the entire Southeast. So all, all strategies, tactics that you'll see have really been, been used across the entire Southeast for redfish, sea trout, snook flounder, the full gamut. Yes, sir. All right. And little bonus here. We're also going to include how you can get everything you need to quickly and consistently find the fish in 10 minutes or less, all from your little iPhone or Android or whatever you happen to be using. A quick two warnings, though. One, this presentation, even though we talk a lot about this 10 minutes or less, it's going to be more than 10 minutes long. It, it might even be an hour uh, because we'll be going through all these case studies, which will take some time. And two, I'm just going to put a flat out warning out there. There will be a special irresistible offer at the end of this presentation where we give you our entire 10 minute system risk free. And if that concerns you or bothers you that we're going to give you an offer at the end, then this is your chance to bolt and avoid hearing about the best deal we've ever given on a webinar. If not, and you're still here, then great. But before we get into the case studies, it's really important that you understand the problem before you can maximize the solution. So the question is, have you ever heard this? The key to catching more fish is as simple as just getting more spots. Luke, I know we heard that a lot. Oh, yeah. I, I spent many, uh, many a days trying to figure this out and just, and just getting mad at people when they were in my spot, right? They got there before <laughs> I did. And, and so I feel the pain, many years of, of feeling that pain. Yep. So if you haven't picked up on the answer, it is flat out wrong. And if it was true, then everyone who owned one of these spot maps would always be catching fish every single trip, right? And these are our personal spot maps. And we know from experience that just because we bought one of these and had the sucker wide open, we weren't catching fish. So I think we can all agree it's not just about GPS spots. So do you want to know why more spots are not the answer? Well, it comes down to one big thing. GPS spots are stagnant. They're static. They do not move. They're like this nasty water here. But guess what does move? we we'll give you a little hint. They got tails and they got no fences to hold them back. It's fish. Fish are moving constantly. We know they move every single day with the tide. They certainly move by season. Some of them go out and spawn. They're moving all the time. And yet so many of us think, oh man, we just get that one or two or maybe even three or four spots if you're lucky. I'm just going to catch fish all the time. And, and that's absolutely not true. Fish move. And once you can understand that, we can all agree, then these case studies are going to make a whole lot more sense. And you're ultimately going to become a whole lot more consistent. So pro tip, Luke, you talk about this all the time. Fish are what? They're reactionary. Yes. And, and they're not smart. They're All they're doing is reacting to the, their weather and the, and the water temperature and, and just just the different factors that so they a lot of people say oh they're, they're outsmarted me no they're, they're fish we uh, most anglers totally uh, over overestimate how smart these fish are they're not smart at all they're simply just reacting to the changing environment yep and, and starting with weather we're going to talk about wind and why that's so important and I mean, this slide right here, if you can just remember this, that fish are reactionary, right? They're going to move based on the weather and the weather and the wind and stuff is changing 
constantly. So if you don't have a system to quickly get the real-time trends, that's what it's all about, that's, that's the weather, then you are at a huge disadvantage. And you're probably like how we were when we first started out, kind of just stuck going to the same handful of spots. And that is why random spots on a map rarely, if ever, work. It's also why most anglers who keep going back to the same old boring spots over and over and over again end up skunked and frustrated. Ask us how we know. Because here is the truth, guys. Truth number one is that 90% of all feeding fish can be found in just 10% of any body of water at any given time. What do we call this, Luke? What's the rule? The 90-10 rule. 90-10 rule. We've had our online fishing club, the Insider Club now, for over five years. That is one of the things that comes up every single day. We hammer it home. We, we try to deliver on that every single day, certainly every single week on where that 90-10 zone will be. Because once you find it, everything else is easier, right? Once you, once you know where 90% of all the feeding fish are, everything else becomes so much easier. So truth number two, that coveted 10% feeding zone moves constantly, as we talked about, based on weather, tides, and trends. And I love this quote by Paul Johnson, uh, The Scientific Anglers, the book, one of the top selling books of all time about the science and biology of fish. And he says that even any given body of water, which I have dived because he was a big, big time scuba diver where he would film fish less than 10% of the underwater acreage has held 90% of the game fish population. All too often, the fisherman has absolutely no clue that he cruised by some of the finest fishing areas he could imagine in his wildest dreams. And Paul in that book, has many pictures of these areas where it is. I mean, you see an area, we'll call it 100%, and all of the fish, for the most part, are in one little area, one piece of structure. It is so fascinating. Yeah, so it should fit us too. I'll just add in, like for many yeah. years, it was all about going far, like going far away. And some of my best spots now yeah. are actually really close to boat launches. And no telling how much gas I wasted just thinking that, oh, I have to go five, 10 miles away yes. to, to have good odds. It's really about the, the right type of spot. And, uh, and so it's not about, good, like, like, it just hit me when, um, you know, going past the actual good spots to, to, uh, to unknown or, or unproven proven zones. Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So if it does, it should be clear that becoming a consistent angler is not just about getting your hands on more GPS spots. Instead, becoming a consistent angler is all about finding the 10% zone, otherwise known as the right spot at the right time based on trends. So in summary here, find the 10% feeding zone, you catch fish. Fish in the 90% dead zone, you get skunked. Which one do you want? 10% or 90? Luke, which one do you want? I want the 10%. I'll take the 10%. I want to know where the gold's at. We'll take the 10%. So if that's you, is it yes that you want 10%? Then stick around. We are going to go into these case studies in a, sec in a second. So if the secret is finding the ever-moving 10% feeding zone, how in the heck do we find it? That is the big question. And that is what we're going to cover today. And in our small amount of time, you will come away with knowing how to find that 10% feeding zone quicker than you ever imagined so that you can start outfishing all of your friends and having more consistent trips. We are going to go through the uh, three case studies, and then we are going to have a little bonus where we use tides and trends and weather to predict where the fish will be in your area at any given day. So if you stay to the end, as I mentioned, we are going to give you a special offer that gives you our entire smart fishing spot system completely risk-free. And if you don't know who we are, just a quick little background, because I know there's some people, hey, well, who are you guys? What's the deal? Uh, we're Joe and Luke Simons. We are brothers. We grew up in Florida, born and raised, and grew up fishing. All of our best memories around fishing, all of our vacations, the one over there on the on the left is Luke and I at the Indian Rocks Beach. Uh, we used to do fishing. We went down to Marco Island a couple times a year and the Gasparilla Island and really fished all over Florida. Had a place in Daytona Beach our grandfather did for many years. And, and we started off really frustrated and super inconsistent, you know, chased all the wrong things, studied all the wrong things. We weren't doing things like we're doing here now today. And until one thing, you know, everything changes what we're going to share here. And eventually now fast forward to today have created the largest saltwater fishing club in America. And uh, that's the Salt Strong Insider Club. And, uh, and as I said, done some things right. That's Luke. You know, Luke started crushing it in, uh, in tournaments, and he's pretty humble on this. But, you know, he was, at the time, had a full-time job. 
in uh in in in, in kind of the corporate world notice the the lack of hair and uh, and beard and yet he was up there competing against and, and winning even money against many full-time guides uh in in the area and uh so finally using these same tactics we're going to talk about today started really dialing it in and uh if, if you probably have seen this and maybe haven't put it together maybe it'll it'll connect the dots but that was also my brother luke that caught the snook from the third floor balcony that was that video that went crazy viral uh, where he literally made a left hand cast and uh, Snook nails it right on uh, on video and uh, has to throw the rod down. It was absolutely uh, epic. And uh, that was the Snook from the third floor balcony that seemed like everyone in the country was uh, was was buzzing about at the time. And as I said, for years, we did many things wrong. One of the big ones, and maybe this is you, is we were held hostage to live bait. We uh, That's us there. Uh, where That's Marco, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, that was Marco Island on the right, and that was us, you know, as, as kids, and usually it was me. I was the one that always just super addicted to fishing, and that's me catching bait, and Joe's over there horsing around waiting on me to catch bait probably. And and then the one on the left is uh, is when we started Salt Strong, started doing lessons on, on cast net throwing, knowing that a lot of people are relying on live bait, uh, but, but personally, I, I now am just using all lures for, for redfish, sea trout, snook flounder. And I'm catching way more fish per trip than I ever did before. And so the biggest misconception is that you have to have live bait for saltwater fishing. I don't know why it is that freshwater anglers, most of them use these lures and then saltwater for whatever reason, it's just been ingrained in our heads that live bait's the only way. And in reality, saltwater fish are more aggressive than freshwater. And, and so as long as you can, again, dial in the spots based on the trends, then it, it, you can use lures and just totally crush it and, and actually catch more fish than the live baiters. And that was what we did in that, in that tournament, um, in the tournament series that you saw those pictures on, we were winning, even though we were using live bait uh, or sorry, using lures against others using live bait. So biggest misconception in saltwater fishing by far is live bait is a requirement. It is, it is not the case at all. Yeah. And, but the good news is we're not going to try to convince you. Otherwise our whole job here is to help you find the fish. Yep. We don't care what you use after that to catch them as long as you're getting tight lines. So we will not try to convince you otherwise, but just to let you know, it was pretty game changing for us to, to, to realize that we could go out there and consistently catch fish with just a couple artificial lures. And as I said earlier, one of our other big mistakes is that we were held hostage to the same GPS spots. We had all these maps Maps were like, we literally wouldn't go fishing without them. And uh, gosh, today, I don't even, I don't even know where our old maps are. They're probably in a box up somewhere. And so after doing this for, you know, 20 plus years now, we've realized it's, it's all about trends. Online maps reveal a lot, as you're going to see in just a second. Fish are very predictable and reactionary, as we, uh, we discussed. And that 90% of the feeding fish can be found in 10% of the area at any given time. And the power of smart fishing spots, smart spots, meaning they move around with the fish, which you'll get to see in just a little bit. So we discovered this the hard way. You get shortcuts to get everything the easy way. Are you guys ready? All right, let's get into case study number one is how to quickly find trout any weekend of the year, even if you don't have a troll motor. Luke, can you pull up a, a satellite map and let's go into this one? I uh, will. And let me pop this guy up here. And so what we're going to show is an example. Uh, this is over around Tampa Bay. This is an example for catching sea trout. Again, everything's seasonal, but but this is going to be a, a most of the season type spot, especially, you know, the the, the summer months and, and spring and fall and winter is really going to be the iffy one. But uh, but it's all about just finding the right type of spot as we've been talking about. And and one just one situation for sea trout even if you don't have a fancy boat even no boat at all this is a this i'll show the type of spot where if you have no boat if you have a boat without a trolling motor or obviously if you have a boat with a trolling motor or if you only have a kayak whatever the case is you can easily find spots like this from maps for free with just limited time of using an online map as long as you know what to look for so um so let's cover what to look for so um for sea trout they really love, as far as catching quantities of sea trout, they love hanging on the outside edges of grass flats, especially if it's near a channel. Um, during the summer months, especially, they need that, that cooler water. They need that, that more oxygen, the more oxygenated water, because as the summer comes around, it gets really hot. Hot water depletes the oxygen, which gives them less energy. 
at the same time when their metabolisms are high. So they need to be eating, but they don't have the energy to do so unless they hang around spots with a lot of current flow and water depth to cool down the water and, and move, move more water around. So they also need protection from predators and to be able to hide from their prey to ambush their prey. So we know we need deep water. We, need, we know that we need some current flow and we know that we need some structure. So an easy way to find that combination is to, is to go to the outside edges of grass flats where the water is going from the super shallow water right down to, you can, you can just see on this map, this is just Bing, but Google Maps has great maps, MapQuest. Um, there's a variety of other, even GIS maps from counties. Um, there's a lot of great free maps to use. And we're just gonna cover here the basics. We, we have uh, an entire course for our, our fishing club members that goes through all the mapping platforms and their pros and cons. But regardless of which one you're using, you can use these maps to be able to understand what depth that you're looking at and look for depth changes and look for underwater structure. So in this case, we're just looking again, right here, you can access this by foot. You can access this by paddle, right? Launch and just paddle over there, or you can launch your boat and access it by boat, super easy. Um, we can look on here and we can zoom in and we see this light, this light water right here. And what that is, that's a shallow, uh, a little shallow ridge on this flat. And if you look closely, you can see these little marks on there. I hate seeing these marks. It drives me crazy. What mm -hmm. that means is that somebody with their boat didn't realize there was shallow water there and they rammed up on there and it's called a prop scar. It's the prop of the boat dug through the grass and killed the grass. I hate seeing it. But, but seeing those, those lines, we now know, okay, we have shallow grass, right? And then just looking at these lines and looking at the color changes, you see the, the grass is this color, right? Right on the, on the edges of the lines. And then as it gets deeper, you can see the grass will kind of start fading out and the water will get more of a greenish, like a dark greenish look compared to this look right here. This is shallow sand and this is deep sand. And so we now know automatically, right? Obviously we took a while to discuss this, but after looking at maps for a while, you'll know in like three seconds, okay, I've got a shallow flat uh, grass going down to deeper water into the channel. And knowing that trout need that, that type of spot to, to hold in, during most of the year, this is a, a fail-proof type of spot to go to to get some results. And uh, I've, I've, I've trolled down here, caught fish from the boat. Uh, I've gone out wade fishing, literally walking right out, catching fish. Like this is a spot that is, uh, and there's a, there are dime a dozen. So it's not like, oh, okay, I'm, everybody's going to be coming here now. Like there's spots like this all over the place. It's just a matter of just getting acquainted with these maps and, uh, and knowing what to look for. So yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, and in terms of lures, because that, that might be the next question you're asking, you know, and I've, I've fished with you here in this spot before as well, uh, both by boat and by foot, and just using a little paddle tail lure. We like to slam shady on a little jig head, but use whatever you want. And I'll, I mean, yeah, just that white lure casting out there in straight retrieve, you can do a little pop pop and you will catch trout in spots like this. And others, maybe we can pull up another one because we did that one with the Freedom Boat Club to kind of show some Freedom Boat Club members how to go out there and catch fish. And uh, it, yeah, it was actually kind of nearby and did the same thing. We looked for a channel where that had some moving water that had yeah. a little grass flat on it. Yeah, and so and so what we did, and, and so from these maps, again, you can just see so much, right? You can see the main channel. Um, you can even see some underwater ridges. Like, so here's a grass flat that's coming out and, uh, and you can even see potholes. And so for that, that one video where this is in the, and it was in the core of winter and, uh, and, and we were on a freedom boat club boat so that we didn't have a trolling motor. We didn't have anything, anything fancy. And it was a bay boat. So we, we couldn't go super shallow and you can see this grass is pretty dark. This is, is relatively deep, but you can see the potholes in the grass. So not only can you see where there's grass and where there's not, but you can see the hidden potholes that you otherwise would have to actually drive your boat or, or kayak or paddle your kayak to, to find just spend two seconds on these maps and you can see where the stuff is. And every once in a while, you know, again, certain part of the year, the trout will do this, especially during certain tidal stations, uh, st uh, tidal uh, uh, points, they'll be hold up, hold up in, these, in these potholes. And we, we were trolling and found some fish around here. And then we did a drift to go back over and we anchored out within casting range and just one of these potholes, I believe it was this one, but it was a couple of years ago, so I could be wrong. But in just one of these potholes, it was like 60 plus trout. Like, it was the 90-10 zone all day long. They were all just packed in there. 
Yeah. And so it's really again just finding that 90 10 zone, but it's just so much easier to, to find it once you just know the trends, number one. And then and this, you can just do basic online map research like this, where this is nothing fancy. It's just a matter of getting this free, these free maps and just looking for specific things based on, again, the season and the, the water flow and the, and the wind, as Joe mentioned. Yep. Isn't that cool, guys? It, and this is the kind of stuff we do every single week for our Insider members. And so we, we, we call them spot dissections, and we'll go dissect a spot in, in Texas. And we usually do a couple of, uh, of them a week. Sometimes it's one every single day, depending on the week. And we do this exact same thing where we go di dissect a spot and prove that you could find you know, spots just like that, smart spots, right? And, and based on how the fish are moving with wind and the temperature and all that, you can literally recreate this kind of stuff anywhere. And that is one of the things that we absolutely love doing. As I said, these online maps reveal a lot. All right. Wasn't that awesome? All right, now we're on to case study number two, how to use the wind direction to predict exactly where the feeding fish will be hiding with some really cool drone evidence. Luke, you got that uh, drone stuff to pull up? Yeah, I'll pop this up. This All is right. really cool stuff. This is kind of next level on, on kind of seeing what you can see on online maps, but, but seeing it in real life where you can actually see the fish there. So can you see the screen? Yep. Yeah, so what we're looking at is this is a pothole. And this is seagrass. This is similar to what we were just looking on online maps. And, and this is just obviously with the drone. So you can actually see how the fish are holding in, in, a, in a pothole. And, and we'll, I'll just kind of just show you the, the premise here. This is one pothole. And we're talking about the, the wind and, and how to use the wind to know where the fish are most likely going to be. And again, it's seasonal. So there's not going to be, if it was just one thing, or, oh, I know there's one secret and you can use it throughout the entire year then everybody be catching slams every trip. Right. So you really have to break it down by seasons and even inside the seasons can be different. So we'll, we'll talk about just winter time since that, that's where we are now. In most cases, the fish are gonna be holding on the, the wind protected shorelines, meaning that uh, ideally against a shoreline that has some trees or some houses that are blocking the wind. And the reason for that is because in the winter time, the water is gonna be colder than the fish prefer. And so the fish are naturally gonna to gravitate toward the warmest pockets of water. And, and overnight is when it's the coldest and the flat water, right? Flat, calm water means less surface area from the air to the water, which means that the water isn't gonna absorb as much cold from the air overnight. So, so scientifically, the, you know, the wind protected shorelines are gonna be just a little bit warmer. And even though it's just a fraction, the fish will naturally gravitate there because they're literally going to be all they, all they care about, especially if it gets really cold. All they want to do is just not be so cold. Uh, they're not super hungry in many cases. They're not going to be chasing down lures. So it's, it's crucial to know where they are so that you can now fish slowly and be in the right spots and just bounce a, a good looking lure or throw some live bait in the, in the right zone and catch a bunch of fish. If you do this properly, it'll take what used to be my, my least favorite season to go fishing in the winter time, I thought fish had locked jaw and they weren't there. Uh, I was, I was just fishing my summer spots and I didn't realize that I need to, I need to, to change my overall strategy. So to do this properly, you can find spots like this. Here are some giant snook. These are all uh, 35 to plus inch snook, really big ones. You can see some smaller snook holding over here. Uh, this was a trout. And I think there are some redfish in here too. We plucked off uh, multiple fish out of here but pretty cool where you have one spot and then all the fish are just naturally gravitating there and uh and and then you can actually find these potholes from online maps so it, you can, as long as you know what to look for you can quickly find a slam spot just from putting the the, the pieces of the puzzle together pretty can cool you, can you move it up the the video so we can see yeah so go ahead and play it and so here's the drone kind of moving along and, uh, and just real powerful. And as, as we move along, you'll see that on the grass, like this, there's a big snook out here, but it was because the drone spooked it. But on the grass, there's really not much life at all, right? So if you're fishing, the, the whole thing, that was a big snook right there in the middle. But that, that again, that was one that we spooked out of, the, uh, out of the, that hole. The, the bigger snook are obviously the most weary. They did not like that drone above yeah, that's them. A, that's a big one right there. Isn't that cool? Ten. Yeah, so look, look at all these other fish, right? These smaller ones aren't really are aware of, of what's going on. You can even see it, it looks like a, a red or something right there. But really is amazing just to see firsthand 
on, on just how much those fish will just naturally gravitate together uh, during certain seasons. And so if you don't know the 90-10 rule, right, if you're not focused on that 90-10, you can be spinning, you know, the odds are highest that you're going to be in the, in the dead zone because these fish are going to be in small zones. And, uh, and unless you get right in there and spend your time there, you're not going to be catching many fish. Yep. And I want to show this to you. You're about to see what Luke was talking about earlier. Those are the mangrove trees. And that was what was protecting that area, which is why they're so push, uh, pushed up close from that wind hitting it all night long. And that part is critical. And that's why we, we hammer that home. Look at that. And it, it, if you if you pause it right here, hopefully Luke, you can pause it. Okay. I mean, if this is 100% of the potential feeding zone, look, we know, I mean, all those fish in that one area, that's the 90-10 zone in full effect. And look how close they are to the shore, even, you know, in a, in a cold month when this, uh, this happened. And uh, yeah, it was crazy. And we were able to catch, you know, fish all out of this pothole because we knew where to look. And that's once again, I mean, it's, it, Luke said, it, it's not as easy to just think, oh, one day because the wind was going this direction on this one particular day, there's a little bit more to the, to the understanding of the trends, but that's what we do every week in 10 minutes or less in our insider club. So you know exactly what types of areas to look for, what depth to find these, uh, these fish, and, uh, and even what lures or, or live bait to use to maximize the amount of strikes that you're going to get each trip. Yeah, and, and just to see how fine-tuned this is, so once you get the trend and you get it right, you can apply it across to, to any other area. That's why now if somebody's in the spot I was going to go to, it's not, it doesn't require any stress at all. Okay, bummer, they're in that spot. Let me go to another, the next spot that looks just like it. And so this is it too. So you can see this pothole, right? Because this is one with all those fish on it. You can see this other pothole is a little bit deeper, especially this one is, is a lot deeper. There's no fish at all. So it wasn't that, hey, you just need to find a, a pothole near some grass. It needs to be the right depth. So if you look up here, right, here's the fish. Looks like there's one right there. And it's, again, another pothole in similar depth. And if we look up here, there's another fish, right? Another pothole in the same depth of water as this one. And so it was really about finding that trend. It was a wind-protected shoreline with a, a pothole surrounded by seagrass. If you find that trend, you've got it. And so knowing that, like that day we caught a good amount of fish because all we did is we found that trend and just went to the next spot then the next one and the next one and so on and so forth and throughout the day too they'll move from deep to shallow and uh and that's what we cover again on the uh, every week to inside club members is just how to predict how those fish are going to be moving uh you know once we know what the weather and, and tides are going to be yep yeah because you can see where the shadow is on those trees you can see the sun's been hitting that area it's warmed it up in the shallow waters and the fish have been pushing up so really, really cool. I mean, isn't that awesome? So telling what, uh, what a drone will show you about 90-10. I mean, we have so many different examples just like this that, uh, that prove this works over and over and over again. All right, onward to case study number three, how to use weekly trends to predict where the redfish will be. Luke, what do we got here? So yeah, what I'll show is this, is this platform that we put together, and it's just it's just going to show the, a case study and just what to look for on uh, on doing a pre-trip plan. So can you see the screen now? Yep. Yeah. So what this is, this is it's called we call it smart fishing tides, and it's just it's just a program that puts everything together that you need to be you need to be focused on. And and so we'll we'll just talk about you know what to think about. And it's really this screen right here. So as far as data gathering, this is really the core data that you need for for just putting all together obviously you need to know the trends that's uh you know if you can obviously fish every day is great ideally you have a network of anglers to uh to just just engage with and and just converse with and and just share tips and, and get intel on on where the what like what the fish are doing and then knowing that you can quickly look at data like this that has you need to know the wind speed and the wind direction right you know if there's gonna be cloud cover or no cloud cover makes a big difference on on the types of of lures and the speed of retrieves that you do. And you need to know the tides. What is the tide, uh, the, the tide level and the current flow? What is gonna be happening throughout the day so that you can plan your trip and, and plan your trip according to what the trends have been, uh, have been happening. So when you do that all together, I know it sounds a little bit complex, but it's, uh, it gets very easy over time. Um, it's, it's, it's like clockwork, right? It's literally predicting where those fish are gonna be and, and uh, and then you have to do is that go out there and, and execute. 
Yeah. And so we're going to show you how to do that real quick and kind of predict where redfish would be during a day like this, just one that we picked up. So Luke, scroll back up a little bit more. This is the ultimate cheat sheet, right? That's what we all want, right? We all want someone to tell us what's the best day, what's the best time of day, which you're going to see down below in just a second, and just basically tell you when you should be fishing. Like when is your best chance to maximize your strikes? We've taken all kinds of different variables from barometric pressure and wind and all that stuff into this formula that will show you which should be the best day in general for you to get consistent tight lines for redfish, speckled trout and snook and, and flounder, et cetera. And a 10 means like perfect, like you better be taking the day off kind of a deal. And a, you know, one means, man, the chances are horrible, like probably hurricane coming through type of a deal. So you can see, I mean, this coming up this uh, Saturday, uh, 7.5, we have a, an eight, we got an 8.3 next week. So this starts giving you the ability to start picking your days a little bit smarter, right? And, and, and enabling you to say, all right, my better chances are going to be this day. So maybe I should take off this day instead of that. And then as you scroll down below, we even have it broken out by time of day. If we keep scrolling down a little bit more. Yep. So that we have hourly feeding projections as well. And obviously the green is going to be your better chances. And then we have radar and everything. I mean, a little, everything you need is right in here. And this is for all of our, all of our members. And, uh, and we have members that are using this every single day for every single trip and, and even have some historical data if they want to go back and see and, and try to see, man, why, why, I wonder why that day worked so well, which is really, really, really powerful. So they're giving all this, what types of areas would we be fishing? We got a day that starts off in the 60s and gets up in the 70s. You know, we, we don't have too steep of a, of a slope in terms of, uh, of the current. Uh, what are you doing here? What types of areas for redfish in particular are you going to be looking at? Yeah, so I'll, I, this is actually an area that I fished last week, and I went just went exploration fishing. I had a three-hour window to go fish. Okay, let's. Um, I took Otis, took my dog Otis out, and loaded up the rods and the boat and went. And so it was actually similar tides uh, to this. And and what it was is you can see in the morning here. This is the the water height change, and so you can see in the morning. Yes, there's a high and low right there, you know, pretty close to each other, and but there's no there's really hardly any movement of of height. So that means there's not going to be much current flow which is usually not a good thing. And so I did a gentleman start. I got on the water at like 1030. It was again, it was a tide cycle just like this. I wanted to wait to that water, that current flow to start. And so I started, I fished the, the, uh, the incoming, right? So as the water is, is cold, it's a little bit colder than the norm. So in the morning it was cold. And then as the sun was out and it gradually warmed up the water um, that the fish get more comfortable. And my prediction was that the bite was gonna be right around this time frame. And it ended up having a great day. Uh, it was, a, it was a cost of two really nice reds and then a really big snook. And the snook fight was amazing. And it got me way into the dock. And somehow the, the snook got in the boat without Otis, my crazy dog Otis falling out of the boat. And uh, it was awesome. So fun video coming out soon. But it was all made possible just by a quick analysis of the, the, wind, the wind direction, the wind speed. I wanted to see if it was cloudy. There were no clouds at all. And the water was really clear. So I knew that, again, I can go back down to the, the map, the map is in here as well. And I was fishing the zone over here and I just knew that this shoreline was gonna be protected from the wind. And it also has a bunch of docks, which is usually good for, for fishing when the water's, you know, the water was clear and there was you know, no clouds at all in the sky. The fish are gonna be finicky, and, but they're just a little bit more comfortable under docks. So I just had our Power Prawn, uh, our Power Prawn USA lure and it was just skipping up under docks. And had a great day. Let me see if I can pull up those picks. But uh, it was really just about putting all the pieces together, and it, it did not take much time. I actually filmed the pre-trip plan. It took me like three minutes of uh, of planning. Nice. And then here's here's that big snook that got me under the dock. It was under that dock right there. Power Prawn Junior uh, or Power Prawn USA right in his mouth. Uh, caught this big red as well. It was probably upper slot red, maybe a little bit over slot. I just did a quick release, and then here's the uh, the third one. So in a quick three hour trip to the spot, I've only fished one time in my life uh, about five years ago and, um, and, and, and covered all the fish I caught were in different areas that I've never fished. And, um, and it's just as simple as that. It's something that for years, I never would have thought I'd be able to go to a new area and, and actually catch fish, especially with the loud, crazy dog on the boat. <laughs> and, uh, and it's possible. Like it really is every time I've been pinching myself because um, I can't tell you how many years of frustration 
Um, and I, I know Joe shares as well. We had many years of just super frustration moments where we would you'd be able, when we used to be able to fish all day long and, and we would maybe catch like one snook and we were high fiving each other. And then we had to, we had to go out and catch bait, sometimes take an hour to catch bait and then just you know, have to keep the bait alive and, and just and catch a lot of catfish. And, uh, and now just going out, taking, I literally had two lures and, uh, and three hours to fish and, and caught some, some really good stuff. And, uh, so I just, this is, this is just really what we teach now. And it's just so, it's just so much fun and rewarding to, to see members, you know, have, have similar stories to this. Yeah. I mean, how awesome is this guys? I mean, wouldn't you love to go out and have a, a day like that in just an hour or two, you know, with, uh, with your dog on, uh, on board the skiff on a day where there's probably not that many boats out there. I was not with you that day, but I'm guessing a little bit chillier and it wasn't that many people out on, uh, on the water. And, you know, even full-time guides have tough days, right? Let's be honest. There's, there's always going to be tough days, right? But we try to give you every single shortcut that the full-time guides use to quickly know exactly where you should fish. The whole thing's about tight lines, right? We want to make sure you never get skunked. And we want to make sure every trip you're going out there with confidence and that you can consistently get some strikes and that you will be landing fish. That's our goal, right? Is, is anglers should be all of our goal as anglers is to go out there and, and every day it's a little bit of a learning curve, right? Every day you're putting new pieces of the puzzle, puzzle together, but we try to give you every shortcut possible so that you can as quick as quick as you can ever imagine, know exactly where you should be fishing, know exactly where that 90 10 zone is. Isn't that cool? Yeah, simple as that. All right. So you might still be wondering how you can find the fish in your area in any given week in just 10 minutes or less, right? Well, introducing the Smart Fishing Spot system. The SFT system combines weather, tides, and real-time trends to help you find the fish in 10 minutes or less every single week all year long. The great news is we'll show you exactly where you can find all three of those from your phone in 10 minutes or less per week so you always have a huge head start over your fishing buddies when it comes to finding the fish fast what we realize is that anglers are busy right they want shortcuts we all want shortcuts you want to find the fish fast and they want a guy to simply tell them where to go right because let's face it a big problem is that we don't have enough time to scout out new areas we rarely get to fish enough as it is right the truth is that we need a simple way to predict exactly where the fish will be in our area. A blueprint to give us the freedom to hit the water with confidence, knowing exactly where to catch inshore slams in every scenario all year long that we can master in 10 minutes or less. Well, the good news for you is that for the last four years, Luke has been building out and recording his entire smart fishing spot system, where he and our other pro fishing coaches dissect, analyze, and reveal new smart fishing spots every single week, literally handing you the exact game plan on where to catch inshore slams every weekend based on science, weather, and trends in your area in only 10 minutes per week. A powerful video that shows you exactly where to find the fish in your area in 10 minutes or less every single Friday morning, 52 times per year. It's that simple. It's like having a full-time fishing guide take you by the hand and show you exactly where to fish every week and then explain why the fish will be in each spot all in 10 minutes or less per week. Plus, it's interactive, so you can ask as many questions to the guide as you want. And it lets any angler, regardless of experience and regardless of where you live, skyrocket their results, outfish their friends, and catch more inshore slams in less time. Without needing to be on the water every week. Without needing a fancy boat and all the latest gear. And even if you're not a tech whiz. Introducing the Smart Fishing Spot system, where you get to follow the redfish and the snook and the flounder and trout as they move. You'll instantly know the best day, time, and tide to fish with our proprietary strike score calendar, our tide chart with all the weather you need that changes every 15 minutes, and with our hourly feeding level projection showing the best times of day to fish in your area. Plus over 30,000 smart fishing spots and reports. Every single pin that you see here on this map is a documented fishing report that either we did or one of our members did, and you get access to all of them. 
So here's everything you'll receive today. Our Smart Fishing Spot System, which is our Smart Fishing Game Plan video, the 10 minutes video we do every single week, our Insider Fishing Reports, that's where we get on the water. It's like seeing over our shoulder every single week. We're now doing one per day, Monday through Friday, where we go fish a brand new spot and report back to you everything that happened, including all the trends, where we caught fish, what we caught fish on, et cetera. You'll also get our proprietary strike score best day to fish tool that tells you exactly what day to fish, including the best time of day, tides, and more. And we're going to throw in 15 essential cheat sheets, showing you the best bait and lure for every depth, tide, and season, and many other shortcuts for catching every inshore species you can imagine. And then, as I mentioned, we will get you unlimited access to that smart reports library with over 30,000 fishing reports. Just imagine being able to find new fishing spots from the comfort of your home in less than 10 minutes. And imagine being able to watch a simple 10 minute video and instantly know exactly where the feeding fish will be that weekend. And imagine how amazing it will feel to finally have tons of new fishing spots that actually work. Plus, when you invest in the Smart Fishing Spot system, we're going to throw in the following bonuses completely for free. Number one is the Finding Spots Mastery course. This is the course that Luke mentioned earlier where we get on all of the different satellite maps and show you exactly how to find hidden honey holes. We've even had full-time guides who go through this and say, oh my gosh, I cannot believe you're only charging a couple hundred dollars for this. Now we throw it in completely for free for any of you who take us up on the special deal today. We're also going to throw in the positioning and approach mastery course. One of the things that is rarely taught is how to position your boat or kayak or even your wading boots in a spot based on the weather and the tides and the current, et cetera. This course goes into that and shows you every example from fishing oyster bars to docks to sandbars to flats, et cetera, and shows you exactly how to position and approach yourself so that you get to maximize the amount of fish you catch in every area, never spooking them like most people do. $135 value. The third bonus is the Inshore Fishing Mastery Course. That's we teamed up with Captain Peter Deeks and Tony Acevedo, one of our kayak fishing coaches, and we cover everything you could possibly want to know in all four seasons, regardless if you're in a boat or a skiff or a kayak or wading boots. $297 value that we used to charge for this course. Bonus number four, this is really cool, is the mini fishing course library. We now have over 20 of these mini fishing courses. They're all online and you get unlimited access to all of them. You can watch them anywhere on your phone, your tablet, your desktop, whatever it is. And we've teamed up with different guides on different types of tactics and different types of species. All in all, we paid over $30,000 to get all of this content for you and you get it completely for free as a bonus today. Number five, the Salt Strong Insider Club. You've probably heard about our Insider Club. We now have almost 30,000 members in this club, and you'll get unlimited access to the entire club. Normally, it's $19.97 per month, $240. We are going to throw an entire year membership in completely for free. And if you don't know, we also do discounts on everything in our tackle store, including rods, reels, line lures, et cetera. And the discounts alone can more than pay for this entire system. And these are on fishing products that you're already buying. Our average member saves way over $100 per year just on their tackle savings. So here's what you're about to get. The Smart Fishing Spot System the Finding Spots Mastery Course, the Positioning and Approach Mastery Course, the Inshore Fishing Mastery Course, the Mini Course Complete Library, and the Salt Strong Insider Club, a total value $2,466. Guaranteed for today only because we won't keep the special offer up much longer. So the good news is we're not going to make you pay the $2,466. You've made it this far. We want to reward people who stick with us and take action. So it's not going to be $2,466, even though we know many people would pay for that just to be able to catch fish as consistently as we know you will once you go through this. And even better news, we're not going to even charge you $1,000 for this entire system, not even $500. In fact, not even $250. Instead, you can get unlimited access to everything I just showed you today for just one payment of $97, which boils down to just $1.87 per week. And if you want to boil it down even more, that's just $27 cents per day. That's less than this cup of coffee per day. 
Not only that, it comes with a one year guarantee. Our parents taught us that we don't deserve to keep your money unless you are absolutely thrilled. And so we put a monster big guarantee on this. And here's how it works. If you go through an entire year and you don't feel like it was an amazing investment, we will give your money back, no questions asked. In fact, we'll actually go another step. If you take action today on this day right here today, we will actually double it. So if you make it an entire year and you don't think it was the best fishing investment you ever had, and in fact, if you think it wasted your time, not only will we give you your money back, we will double it back. So we will give you the 97 plus 97. Heck, we'll just round it up and give you a $200 just for trying this out. You literally have nothing to lose. So the big question you need to ask yourself right now is, would you invest $1.86 to have a full-time fishing coach show you exactly where to fish every week in 10 minutes or less. Almost 30,000 anglers just like you have said yes to that very question. So don't miss out. Click down below just $97 for everything that you see here today. You will get unlimited access for a year. And as I said, you have a guarantee backing this up that you will save time, that you will catch more fish, and that you also will save money on your tackle. And not only that, if you're still on the fence, we're going to put a payment schedule in there just to show you how serious we are. If you don't want to pay the 97 up front, we will have a very fair monthly deal just to make sure you get in there because we know this works. We know that you will succeed with this. And at any time that you want to upgrade to save more money by going annual, just shoot us an email and we can automatically upgrade you. That's how much we want you in here. So click down below. Don't miss out just $97 today for this entire smart fishing spot system. You will not find anything else out there on the entire internet like this. There's nothing like this on YouTube. There is no one teaching the kind of stuff that we teach. And there's no one simplifying it and making it super easy and fast for you to find the honey holes anytime you go fishing. Once again, this is going to help you save money. This is going to help you save time. This is going to get you mad respect from your spouse and your coworkers and your friends. So there's no more, hey, how did it go, honey? Or hey, how did it go from your coworkers and you had a tough day? That is going to be out the window. No more of that. It's also going to give you more freedom and control and fishing in the smartest times, in the smartest times of day, and ultimately have more fun. So don't miss out just $97 today for this entire system. That's one payment covers you for the entire year. Click down below right now that locks you in for the year. And, and then you will have an option to renew, but there's no pressure to that now for right now. All you have to do is click yes down below, put your information in. We'll even send you a little, little thank you welcome kit and you have instant access to everything that we've showed you today. So click down below now. Can't wait to see you inside the club. All right. If you're still here, that means you might be on the fence and you're still wondering, all right, will this really work for me? Even though we have that 200% guarantee, I, I understand where you're coming from. So I want to answer any final questions on, on who this has worked for. So it's worked for everyone from weekend warriors to beginners, people who have never caught an inshore fish before in their lives. And even many full-time guides are in this same system. It's also worked for boaters, kayakers, and shore anglers. So yes, even if all you have is a pair of wading boots, this will work for you. Texas to Florida to Virginia, and obviously anywhere in between is really the bread and butter. That is where we have fishing coaches doing analysis. That's where we have most of our members. And those are really the people we can help who are into inshore fishing from Texas to Florida to Virginia and anywhere in between. Although we do have members in all 50 states and even some members who have second homes or just come here for a month or two and absolutely want to maximize their time. So don't miss out just $97 today. Click down below to get this entire system for just one payment of $97 to cover you for an entire year of unlimited access to everything. Click down below and I'll see you inside.